all the way onto lesson four now. Up until now, we've shown things on the screen. We've controlled the speaker, but now we're going to show you another feature of the M5 stack. On either side of the device, we have flashing lights. It's not just an individual light. You may have heard of things called LEDs. LED stands for light emitting diode. Simply an electronic component that we can turn on or off. But there's something particularly special about these LEDs. They're known as RGB LEDs, which stands for red, green, and blue. Because basically we can mix different levels of those colors to create pretty much any color we want. And another special thing about these LEDs is they're not just a single strip. In each of these bars on both sides, we have five individual LEDs, a total of 10. And we can control each one of them individually. For instance, I could tell the first LED to turn blue and the fifth LED to turn red, independent of each other. So let's see how we can get started programming them. Okay, now in UI Flow, keeping good habits, the first thing we want to do is go and name our project. So we're going to name this RGB bar. And there we go. Okay, so now to find the RGB bar controlling blocks, we're going to click into hardware and then go down to RGB. Here we have a range of different blocks and then we're going to try them out one by one. First, we're going to focus on these blocks that have a small color swatch on the side. Let's drag the first block in from this section. Here it says set RGB bar color. Okay, if we drag that and connect it up to setup, and now we have here a color swatch if we click on the small color block. So we can change this to a whole bunch of different colors. And then if we run that on the M5 Go, you'll see that basically each side, both sides of the uh, RGB bar will light up to whichever color that we choose. Okay, now if we go back into RGB bar, and now we're going to choose the third block. Okay, if we drag that in there, here it says set left side RGB bar color, and then we've got the color swatch again. But notice here we have a little drop down menu. We can either choose left or right. So we'll set this one to left, and then I'm gonna duplicate this, drag it in, and then do a set right. So this way we can independently set the left and the right side RGB bars of the M5 Go to a separate color. Now obviously if we run this, we don't have any delay in there as we've talked about before. So it's, it's not going to show a change. So we're going to need those timer blocks in there. So we can time, add a time block of wait one second and then we're going to see the change. Okay. So now we can see roughly those basically control the left and the right side RGB bars independently. Let's go back into the RGB blocks. And now we're going to choose the sixth block in this list. Uh, fifth, sorry. This says set the one RGB color. So as I mentioned before, there are 10 LEDs in total, five on each side. So what this will let us do, if we duplicate a bunch of these, is we can set those individual LEDs by number to different colors. And when we run the code, we'll see that those LEDs are set independently to the different colors that we've chosen. Okay, now if we go back into the RGB blocks, you'll, you'll probably have noticed we have these other blocks that have set RGB bar color to RGB, and we have 000. Now let's 
have a try and understand of this system. So we know that RGB stands for red, green and blue. So this system is basically for representing the color spectrum on a screen or such things as LEDs. In these blocks we can enter the values 0 up until 255. 255 being the maximum value of each color that we can display. If we have a quick look at this diagram you can see where each of the color spheres intersect. So for instance if I wanted a yellow I could put 255 in the red section and then 255 in the green section and I'd get a sort of yellowish green color. So by putting in different values into these uh, input fields we can get different colors and we have more control over the colors than with our simple swatch that is in, in the other blocks. Okay, so I'm going to set this now. If I set this to 255 in each of the different sections, I'm going to get the color white because this is the maximum value of all the colors. If I was just to set it to 0, 0, and 0, what color would I get? I'd get black. In the case of the LEDs, this is basically the absence of color or turning the LEDs off. So now if we want to start to program the, the flashing lights of a police car, as we showed in the intro video to this lesson, let's start with a setup block and a loop block. Okay, and then what we want to do is alternate between a red light and a blue light. So first let's start by choosing the, the set left side RGB bar color. It's already set to red, so we don't need to change that. And then we'll duplicate this. Of course we want to switch that LED bar off when we switch to the blue color. So we'll have the left side first light up red and then turn off and then the right side will turn up blue and then turn off. Okay, so we'll set this to black, basically meaning turn off the LED light. Now of course, along with the flashing lights on a police car, we have a siren so we're going to want to add the music in there. So we've used the speaker blocks before. We can go into speaker blocks and drag the play tone block in there. And we're going to set this to high C. Okay, now to alternate to the right side of the RGB bar and to add another sound for the siren. So we can either duplicate these blocks here and change this drop down list to right. And then we change the colors. Okay, and then we change this to a blue. And again, we change the other block to black to switch it off. And now we're going to want maybe a lower tone inside our speaker block. So we're going to choose a middle G sharp for this note. Okay, and that's pretty much it for our siren program. Now if we play that. And that's all for our police siren program. We can go now to settings if we want, save that, download it to your computer. You can also download it to your device. And that's all for our lesson this week. Make sure you join us next week for the second half of this lesson. If you had any issues, just leave us a comment. Make sure to like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.